This is part two of five, covering chapter three, The Chemical Basis of Life, part two. In the previous part of this chapter, we talked about carbohydrates. This part, part three, is going to be looking at lipids, our second group of macromolecules. Lipids are composed predominantly of hydrogen and carbon atoms, and these hydrogen and carbon atoms they have similar electronegativities, so they're going to form lots of nonpolar covalent bonds. And because of these nonpolar covalent bonds, you're going to have molecules that are hydrophobic. And the functions of these hydrophobic lipids are either long term energy storage, so the fats and oils, or another function is for insulation. Um, a third function not listed up here, you can also use these lipids for waterproofing because they're, they're hydrophobic properties. The first type of lipid we're going to look at are called the fats or the triglycerides. So they're also known as triglycerols and this is because you have a glycerol molecule. If you look on the far left on the bottom you have a glycerol molecule. To that glycerol molecule, you're going to add three fatty acid chains to it. These fatty acid chains, these are the parts that are the hydrophobic part of the molecule. You add these fatty acid chains onto your glycerol using the dehydration reaction. So you're going to take out water and you're going to form a bond called an ester bond. So lipids, you're going to see these ester bonds. The fatty acids that we are attaching to the glycerol in the previous slide, those fatty acids, there's different types. One type of fatty acid is called a saturated fat. This is when all your carbons in the chain are linked by a single covalent bond. This causes the chain to be very, very straight. And you can see that at the bottom, so we have black circles representing the carbons. All those carbons are linked together by one bond and it forms a straight chain. These chains, because they're straight, they can stack up on top of each other. That allows saturated fats to be solid at room temp. So saturated fats are usually the animal fats. So for example, butter, or if you've ever cooked hamburger and you let the oil from the hamburger cool down to room temperature is going to solidify. Another type of fatty acid is called unsaturated. Unsaturated fatty acids are when two or more double bonds occur between your carbon atoms in the chain. These double bonds cause the chain to bend. And you can see that up in the top we have a carbon chain two of those carbon atoms, they have a double bond. And that's going to cause the chain to bend. Because of this, these chains, they don't stack up as nicely as the saturated fats. So these unsaturated fats, they tend to be liquid at room temperature. So these are usually the plant oils or plant fats. So the example we have up here is canola oil, but you can have olive oil, corn oil, any type of vegetable oil. It's going to be liquid at room temp. In nature, these fatty acids are usually found in the cis form. So this means that the two hydrogens that are attached to the two carbons that have the double bond, those two hydrogens are facing the same direction. So remember, that's a type of isomer. The trans unsaturated fatty acids, these are when we force one of those hydrogens to flip to the other side. So those two hydrogens are going to be going in opposite directions. This is done by a synthetic process, and these trans fatty acids have been linked to different diseases like heart disease. 
We just looked at one type of lipid called a fat or triglyceride. Another type of lipid is called a phospholipid. Phospholipids, they're composed of a glycerol molecule. To that glycerol molecule, you have two fatty acids attached to it. And in that third spot on the glycerol, you have a phosphate group attached. So these phospholipids are usually represented as a circle with two fatty acid tails coming out of them. Phospholipids are amphipathic molecules. We talked about this in chapter two. So amphipathic means that this molecule, it has a hydrophilic and a hydrophobic part to it. The phosphate region, the head region, that circle, it has polar covalent bonds, which means it's hydrophilic, and that's the head region. The fatty acid chains, they have nonpolar bonds. That means that they're hydrophobic, they're water-fearing, and those are the two tails coming out of your phospholipid. These phospholipids are really, really important because they make up cell membranes. And we'll look at phospholipids in more detail in chapter four and five when we get to different parts of the cell and then how these membranes actually work in the cell. The third and final type of lipid is the steroids. Steroids look a little bit different. They don't have these fatty acid tails or chains that we've been looking at. Steroids are four interconnected rings of carbon atoms. And the reason why steroids are included in the lipids is that they're not very water soluble, they're hydrophobic, which is what defines a lipid. Steroids are really important. They're actually made from cholesterol. And then we take this cholesterol our cells will modify the cholesterol. It'll create tiny differences in the chemical structure. And this will form the different types of steroids. So for example, two steroids are estrogen and testosterone. So estrogen and testosterone, they're both made from cholesterol, but they just have tiny little differences in them. So here's cholesterol molecule. And you can take that cholesterol, you can modify it into either estrogen on the left or testosterone on the right. Estrogen is a steroid or hormone that you find in females, and it causes us females to have female characteristics. So for example, in a cardinal, if that individual has lots of estrogen, she will look kind of more drab or brown looking. Testosterone is the steroid or hormone that causes males to have male characteristics. In cardinals, the testosterone causes those males to have really bright red colors. So you can see that these two steroids, they look very, very similar to each other, but they can cause very large differences between the females and males. So this Part of chapter three was looking at the lipids. So in the lipids, they're hydrophobic, so that's what defines a lipid as a lipid. And they include the fats, we looked at phospholipids, and then we also looked at the steroids.